Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are continuing on with the makeup declutter. This time we are decluttering primers, foundations, concealers, and setting powders. And at one point I thought I was going to break up the video because it, it's just a lot of different things. But let's be honest, no one is super excited about primers and setting powders. At least I don't think I am. So I just put them all together because they are technically complexion products. At least that's how I classify them. But before we jump into this, one thing I will say, because primers, concealers, foundations are all, and even setting powders, they're all things that can be contaminated and foundations and those types of things break down pretty quickly, those things are actually going to be thrown away. Unless it's a fairly new product that I purchased, and I know with foundations, I have actually switched shades because I've been staying you know tanned and haven't gone really pale again so those shades that I had just recently purchased earlier in the year before I started to get a tan they might be passed on to friends but I'm not giving them to any of my subscribers I don't feel comfortable doing that especially because those types of products can actually keep bacteria in them I do like the pump foundations or even primers because they're not gonna suck bacteria in as much as like setting powder where you dip a utensil into it but that's it you know those things are going to be thrown away because they have an expiration date and they start to break down and they can look really gross and wretched so that's where i stand on that also if you haven't seen the other videos in my declutter series i'll have them linked down below we've already decluttered eyeshadows blushes and bronzers i still have to do highlighter and i have a couple other ones now before we jump into it if you're new here make sure to hit the subscribe button down below hit the bell for notifications new videos if you like this video make sure to give it a big thumbs up but if you want to see what items i decluttered out of my foundations primers concealers and setting powders just keep watching Okay, so this one's gonna kick off complexion. We're starting with the primer drawer. And then I know I've got foundation, concealer, and setting powders. I think those are all gonna be the same. <laughs> this first one, Tarte Timeless, literally need to purchase a new one. I am at my wit's end with it. And apparently it's really loved, but I just have the tiniest amount left, so I'm just using it till it's gone. The e.l.f. Duncan Donut Forget Primer. This one I want to say has like a sheen. Yeah, it's kind of glowy. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of it, so I'm going to get rid of this one. e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. Really, really, really like this one. And it's been well loved. So I'm going to keep this one as well. Touch and Soul Pretty Filter. Icy Sherbet Primer. That is like a mouthful. This one actually has an expiration date of November 2023. So this one is still good. I do like when companies put the expiration date on here because it takes the guesswork out of it. This has a really light scent. It is really nice on the skin. The downside is it doesn't always fill in my pores. So I do still go in with my Tarte Timeless for my more porous areas. But this is really nice. It kind of has like a cool to the touch feel. And it is, I want to say a silicone primer. I, I would tell you, but it's in Korean. Tula Skin Care Brighten Up Smoothing Primer Gel. This one doesn't really have a scent. I do like it. It's kind of like a silicone feel to it. This says it's silicone free, but it feels like it's kind of a silicone primer. It could just be because that's what you need for a pore filling smoothing primer, but it does say it's silicone free. The Glam Glow, what is this? Super Mattify Six Acid Clarifying Primer. I used this, I want to say once or twice. It's actually quite interesting. It has a little spatula to kind of dig the product out. And then it has like a licorice scent. 
yeah, it definitely has a licorice scent. So I've used it a couple of times. I do like it. I don't always reach for it. I need to. And it is good for 24 months once opened. So I think I just got this last year. The Hydra Veil from Illa Mosqua. I literally just repurchased this. I love this primer. It has a little spatula as well. It's supposed to be secured in here, but I always forget to. <laughs> when I'm trying to get ready in a hurry, I never slide it back on its little like platform, but it helps to be a handle. And it is like, you can't see it. It is a clear jelly and it kind of moves and levels out as you have it settled. This from Mally, it's the Ever Color Poreless Face Defender. It's not really a primer. It's kind of one of those that I use more like a makeup reset. It's a putty, it's clear. You can see where I dug in with its little like pad. This is the coolest little thing when my oil start to push through my makeup. It just remattifies it. This, if you haven't tried it, I got this off of Flip, but love this product. I swear I'm gonna be getting rid of some primers. I swear it. Okay, let's jump into here. This one from Complex Culture, I literally just got it. The Filter Out Anti-Pollution Face Primer. Really, really love this. I have, I actually took this with me to Texas along with this one from Cali Ray. These two are phenomenal. The So Blown Clean Blurring Primer. It is sold out right now. I wanna repurchase it. I tried to repurchase it at Sephora. Stores don't have it. The site doesn't have it. I haven't gone to Cali Ray's website, but these two have been my 2022 finds. I should have done like a 2022 favorites, but I didn't get this until the end of the year. And when we went to Texas, I took this with me. So these two are phenomenal. And I don't have to use my Tarte Timeless with them to blur out my pores or fill in my lines. So keeping both of those. The Mana Beauty Simplified Glow Illuminator. Illuminator, step three. I think this is supposed to be like step three in your makeup routine before you put foundation on. I don't, I've never reached for it, so I'm gonna get rid of this one. Ciate Dewy Skin Vitamin C Glass Glow Primer. I really like this one. I, this has vitamin C, dragon fruit, and yuzu extract. This may not necessarily be my primer in the summer because I can get really oily, but in the winter when my skin is parched, this is beautiful on the skin. Pure 4-in-1 Correcting Primer, Energize and Rescue, Silicone Free. I've used this a couple times and I've liked it, but I do still have to use my Tarte Timeless to fill in my pores. Laura Mercier Pure Canvas Primer Illuminating. If you want your foundation to have like a glowy under effect, this is really pretty. I don't reach for it nearly enough. I think I got this in a subscription box, but I just recently used this, I think in my shop, my stash, and it was so stunning on the skin. I do have to use my Tarte Timeless to fill in pores because it does nothing for smooth. Laura Geller Speckle Hydrate. I actually took this with me to Texas as well, but I had to take my Tarte Timeless to use with this. It is literally a hydrating primer, not a smoothing primer, but I really like it. And even being an oily girl in the summer and spring, this was really nice, but I'm almost out of it. So I'm gonna use it until it's gone. And then I don't know if I'll repurchase, we'll see. Skin Ink Serum Glow Filter. This has been really nice. I like this under my Tarte Timeless um, as a hydration. I don't think I'll use this in the spring or summer. So my window to use this is closing, but I am gonna keep it in my collection for now. Liss Secure Skin Gripping Serum Primer. This is phenomenal. It does need a smoothing primer with it for my pores and my lines, but really like this one. No Problem Prime Essence. This is really nice. I do need a smoothing primer for my pores, which I'm not gonna go and say that for every single one of them because I'll be saying that for a lot of these. But when I need the hydration on my skin, this is something that I reach for. Oh no, this actually expired already. So like I said, it has the expiration date on the back. I, as much as I wanna keep it, I'm going to get rid of it. No, this is one of my favorites. Hourglass Vanish Airbrush Primer, really like this one. This one just came out this past year. 
I've reached for it a couple different times, but I don't reach for it all the time. I really like it though. The Rodal Illuminating Soft Focus Glow Drops. I just, I don't reach for this. It is really pretty. But I just, I don't reach for it nearly enough. I might give this one more shot, but I think I'm close to like the expiration date on this. Oh, six months. Yeah, I'm gonna get rid of this. I've had this for more than six months. NYX Plump Right Back with Electrolytes Mix. This serum, this plumping serum primer is phenomenal. I am gonna keep this one. Sephora Smooth Blur. I think I just got this as a free sample. I'm gonna keep this because I need to try it. The Lancome La Base. I just recently got this as a sample. I do like it because it is a really nice primer, so I'm gonna keep that one as well. These sample sizes though, they're perfect for travel. I don't know why I didn't grab these for when we went to Texas. <laughs> Marc Jacobs, this is the Undercover Blurfection. This does not blur. And it's supposed to be like, I think it's the coconut primer. It, I don't know what it is. I just wasn't a huge fan of this. I like his eyeshadow palettes more than I like this. So I'm gonna get rid of this one. Makeup Forever Step 1 Mattifying Primer. Ooh, I need this in the summer. So I'm gonna keep this one. Lorac Light Source 3-in-1 Illuminating Primer. I, I just, I've used it a couple times. I'm not a huge fan of it. It literally makes my face like a gold. And I just, no, I'm gonna get rid of this one. I was wondering where this one went. This is the Ciate Watermelon Burst Hydrating Primer. Love this. Even in the summer, it is so nice on the skin. Even if you want like a skin tint, but something glowy, this is beautiful. Studio Makeup Silk Hydration Face Primer with hyaluronic acid, silicone free. I've never used this. Is there an expiration date on it? No. Huh, I don't know what it looks like. I think I'm gonna keep this just so I can try it, but I've never used it. I don't know how I got it either. It might've been like a subscription box. So I'll try it out. Infallible Matte Lock from L'Oreal. I have had this for the longest time. <laughs> I need to get rid of it. If I decide to do an affordable makeup, drugstore, whatever, I will buy a new one. Too Faced Hangover Replenishing Face Primer. I just don't reach for this enough and I wanna say it's probably expired. When this expires, which it says six months, it has the worst scent. I don't know what it is, like the chemical smell of it is horrendous. Benefit, the Professional Hydrate Primer. This one, when I first got it, absolutely hated it. It was crumbling off my face. But when I was talking to the girl who does my brows, Haley, um, I was telling her about this primer and she was telling me that I need to actually like press it into the skin, not rub it on the skin or it will start to pill. I tried that and I really liked it after that. So I'm gonna keep this one. Ipkin Radiant Cream Primer. I have never used this. I've never opened it. I just, I'm gonna throw it away. <laughs> Charlotte Tilbury Broad Spectrum SPF 50 Sunscreen. This is nice for in the summer. It expires June 2023, so it's still good. I'm gonna keep it, try it out. I wanna say this had like a white cast to it, but I need to try it again and see. I think I bought it in the summer and maybe that's why I didn't like it, but maybe in the winter it's my primer. We'll see, we'll try. Urban Decay All Nighter Face Primer. This Longwear Foundation Grip Prep Smooths and Perfects. This is actually a really good primer. Um, I do have to use my Tarte Timeless to fill in my pores. Dr. Brandt Pores No More Luminizer Primer. This I don't think actually fills in my pores. It's pretty, it's just, it's not a pore filling one. I'm gonna keep it because I do like how it makes my skin look, but absolutely not pore filling. Yenza Tone Up Primer Essential Glow. I've had this for a while. I don't know why I keep holding onto it because I never use it, so I'm gonna get rid of this. And the last face primer, this is the Blurring Primer from Cover FX. I don't even think this is the like new packaging, not for resale. I think I got this in a subscription box. I'll look, this may be, I may have had it for a second. Let me see. It doesn't smell expired. 
I don't know. Um, that's the worst when I don't know when I purchased something. I may have to do like Tati's doing where she actually puts the dates that she purchased it or opened it. I'm so bad when it comes to stuff like this because foundations, primers, liquid type of things actually have exp expiration dates. Powdered items, not so much, but I'll hold on to it for now. I need to, I'll try it out. I'll do a, like a skin test. Now, let's see how many I got rid of. That is 10 primers that I got rid of. These will not go to my friends. These will actually go in the trash because I don't know when they were opened or how long ago they expired. And I don't want to cause anyone to have chemical burns or any issues with their skin because they used expired products. <laughs> you guys, I almost forgot about this little drawer. These are little like eyeshadow primers and glues and whatnot. And I'll be honest, my P. Louise base is not over here. It is on my table, but that is my go-to. So these ones right here, these are my lash glues and whatnot for like kiss strip lash adhesive. I don't always reach for them. And recently I've been loving magnetic lashes, but you never know when you need it. So I'm gonna keep this. This one has the aloe and it's clear. Um, I do like the Kiss Lash ones. I also have Duo. This one is white but dries clear. And then this is the Lily Lashes Brush on Lash Adhesive, which let's see. Oh, this might be dried out. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't even want to open. <laughs> oh yeah, it's not even coming out. <laughs> that one's gone. <laughs> I guess I need to check these and see too. I, I know I recently purchased this, but I just don't use lashes like that. And the duo. Oh, that one's expired. Bit gross. So that one's gone. That was easy decision. But I know I purchased this recently. These three, I think, came with some of my lashes, but they're probably expired, so I'm gonna get rid of those. I even have like the eyeliner lash adhesive, which I really like. So you know what? I think I'm just gonna get rid of this. This is the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector. Oh, this should have been like in the primers. I'm gonna get rid of that. Too Faced Shadow Insurance Glitter Glue. This one, love it. This is old packaging too. Is it still good? Probably dry in the tube. All right, I'm gonna get rid of that. Probably need a new one. Juvia's Eye Prep Eye Prime Eye Primer. I like this. It just is not my favorite. It's also really light. So I stick with my P. Louise base. But when I use this, it was really, really nice. It's just super pale. Glam Light Icing. Oh, I just recently purchased this. It is really pale though. And you guys, I'm not that pale. I'll keep it because sometimes I need other primers. I have friends that I do makeup on, super light. But I will keep this one. Sigma Eyeshadow Base Primer. Really, really like this. This I got with I think it was the new mod palette but it's just kind of like a mauvey it's kind of shimmery though i'll keep it for now color pop party proof eye primer i want to say this has like a brush yeah it's okay it's not my favorite i'm gonna get rid of this one and then the moonlit oh i just got this one this year this is a primed for the night I'll hold on to this. I'll try it again. I don't think I was like in love with it like I am my P. Louise base, but I'm only keeping four and the rest I got rid of. I'm not even gonna count all those. <laughs> but I think I did pretty good with eyeshadow primers. Okay, you guys, we are on to foundations. There's more than I need or any person needs, um, but mostly because I have light shades, dark shades. These are 
predominantly what I've been using just because I have been maintaining a tan and not <laughs> going super pale. These are more of my lighter shades. So some of these I know are probably going to get passed on. The other thing is some of them are brand new in their box and ugh, it just it's a waste because I purchased it and then I never ended up using it. But like I just I didn't do anything with it. So the ones that are close still I can give to friends if they're as pale as I was, which not everyone likes to tan. So these ones I have been using a lot. I've actually had these in my concealer drawer just kind of like broken down so I can easily grab them. But there's no point in having a full foundation drawer and then a foundation slash concealer drawer. If anything, I can probably put them like that after this and try and stick to half and half, if that makes sense. All right, let's see, we'll start here. This is the L'Oreal Age Perfect Radiant Serum Foundation. This one I just picked up recently. I have it in the shade Sand. This is really pretty. It has an SPF 50. And honestly, you should be using a sunscreen anyways, but the fact that this has it built into it and it's beautiful on the skin. I reach for this when it comes to work just because I don't want anything super heavy throughout the day, but I'll be keeping this one. The Yenza Super Serum Silk Foundation. This, I want to say is light medium. I just need something that deepens it up, which I guess we can knock two out. I use the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter. This is in the shade four, medium. I'll put this underneath anything that I need to deepen up if it's dark enough already. So the Yenza I use, I also like that it has the air pump. So as I use it, it just pushes up, but it really is a nice foundation. And then with the e.l.f. Halo Glow, it just, it's got a beautiful effect. So I use this a lot to deepen up some of my lighter shades, unless they're like super pale. This is the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. I have it in the shade Valoris. I actually had this in a lighter shade that I think I've already passed on to a friend just because I didn't want it to go to waste and I had recently purchased it. I do like that it is a pump, so it makes it nice that I'm not having to pour anything out. I'm not contaminating it. Pumping it out makes it easier to not contaminate with bacteria. So keeping that one. Charlotte's Beautiful Skin Foundation. This is absolutely stunning. I have it in a shade 7 Cool, which I never thought that I would be that shade or that dark. But it is really pretty on the skin. I had a lighter shade that I have already passed on to another friend as well. So always nice to have your foundations and be able to pass them on when you're no longer using them. And especially if they're still within like that three, four months that you've purchased it. Plus also another pump, which my pumps look horrible. I need to clean them up. Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow. I had this in the shade eight, which this is stunning. I reach for this so much. It's so light and airy on the skin. Beautiful foundation. And just to put it out there, I am an oily combination skin. In the summer, I am very oily. In the winter, I get more oily combination than anything. So if that helps you decide your foundation. Makeup Forever HD Skin. I actually just repurchased this. I have it in 2Y20. I think this box means that's what it, or no, this right here, the Y305 is what it used to be. But I think... Do I still have it? I have it right here. So this is my previous shade. <laughs> you can see the difference. I had it in one and 10. So this one I'm gonna get rid of because it is lighter and keep my darker shade. But I do like the packaging. It is so aesthetically pleasing. Fenty Beauty, this is the Pro Filter Soft Matte Longwear Foundation. I have in shade, I have it in the shade 210. This is still on the lighter side for me. So I do use the Halo Glow to darken it up a little bit. It's not super, super pale like some of these other ones, but it's just on the edge. I do need a darker shade though. Let's see, I have the CoverGirl Outlast in 855 Soft Honey. My lighter shade is 817 Golden Natural. This is also, you can see like pretty empty. I've had it for a second, so this one I will throw away and then I will keep my updated shade, which is 855. But I love this and it's a 24 hour SPF 18 transfer resistant. Absolutely stunning. 
These two from MAC, the Studio Fix Fluid. These two are actually in my shade NW20 or NW18. It just depends. Um, in the summer, I will wear the NW20. Uh, in this winter, spring, I can wear NW18 just because it's, it's not as dark. They look very similar in the bottle. I do have NW13, which very pale. So this one I'm gonna get rid of and these two I'm gonna keep. But this was my ride or die in high school and I still will reach for it because it lasts all day. When I first joined the Navy and we would do like freshwater washdowns, which means we're like washing the ship, giving it a good hose down. I could sweat through this, get freaking drenched with water and my makeup would stay put. This is an amazing product. All right, I have the, the L'Oreal Infallible 24-Hour Freshwear. Updated shade is 465. Lighter shade is 445. So I'm keeping 465. I'm going to throw away 445. And actually, I want to say I had just recently repurchased this. <laughs> this is a beautiful, affordable foundation at the drugstore, and it just, it lasts. Maybelline Perfector 4-in-1 Glow Makeup. I don't think I ever use this. It's got one of those um, air pumps. It pushes down from the top. I can tell that I've, I've tried it, but I've never like, I think I swatched it, but I never actually like tried it, tried it. It does look like it has glitter in it, but, or is that the, just a sticker? Nope, it's, I'm gonna try this. Give it a fair shot and I'll make my decision. But I think I picked this up around the same time that I picked up the e.l.f. Halo Glow, and they're supposed to be like similar. If you guys hear the weird vibration in the background, that is my washer dryer combo. It's on spin cycle. That's annoying. I have the, the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation. I had this in the shade five neutral, which is why I was surprised that I was in seven cool for the beautiful skin foundation. <laughs> they look so different, but both are beautiful on the skin. So I'm keeping both of these. Too Faced Born This Way. This is in shade Natural Beige. This is my updated from, here it is. This is in Vanilla. Yeah, you can see that this one's a little bit darker. I also have the 24 hour matte. Yeah, Born This Way matte, also in Vanilla. So these two I'm going to get rid of. I like the Born This Way better than the matte, especially as I've gotten older. I don't go for a lot of mattifying foundations. I will mattify my makeup with powder vice the foundation itself because it seems to settle into my unattractive fine lines. <laughs> so this one I will keep. Oh, I thought I got rid of this one. This is in four neutral. This is too light. So when you look at it, this actually looks like it's closer to this shade, but it's not. This is actually a little bit darker when pumped, but this one I'll pass on. House Labs Triclone Skin Tech Foundation. This is in 300 medium neutral. This is actually pretty dark. <laughs> One of my friends is like, are you trying any foundation? I was like, is it too dark? It's a little too dark. So I need to lighten it up a little bit or get a lighter shade. But for now I'm gonna keep it because I do like the foundation and I will actually lighten it up with a translucent setting powder vice a colored setting powder, which I'll show you because I have a couple that are like, pinky or beigey vice translucent, but translucent will lighten this up. I have the Estee Lauder Double Wear. This does not naturally come with a pump, but you can buy it separately. I prefer pumps to the pour out foundations. I have it in shade 2N1, which is my lighter shade, and then 3N1, which is my updated shade, which is ivory beige. So keeping this one, gonna pass this one on. This is actually really, really light and it kind of looks like it's starting to break down. So this might just get thrown away. But I love this foundation. It will last all day. These two from NARS, Soft Matte Complete Foundation. This one's in the shade Salzburg, which is light 3.5, and then this one is light 4.5 Vienna. And honestly, I think both of these are super light. Uh, it's a little bit darker which why does it look like it's separating? It's actually newer than the other one, but they're still both really light because Valerius M1.5. And even then I think their shade names are different or numbers or whatnot in the different types of foundation. So these will get passed down, especially it's a soft matte. Like I said, I'm not buying new matte foundations. I might pick these up again. I don't know, we'll see, but 
I just, I've been having a hard time with matte foundations that have been looking great on my skin. YSL All Hours Foundation. I literally just purchased this in shade Almond and now I need an updated shade. It is not a super affordable foundation, but it is beautiful on the skin. I also feel bad getting rid of this. I kind of just want to be able to see if I can deepen it up with the e.l.f. Halo Glow <laughs> because it is stunning. I think I, I think that's what I'm going to do for now. And yeah, because this, this was not a cheap foundation. Huda Beauty. Okay, first off, these are both shade Macaron, but one is liquid, one is stick. This stick is actually darker than the liquid, which I can wear this now with a tan, but this is actually too pale for me. So I'm going to get rid of the liquid. I'm going to keep the stick. And I didn't like this at first. I almost decluttered it last year. And then one of my friends is like, no, you've got to give it another shot. It is beautiful. So keeping that one. Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue Tinted Hydrating Gel Cream. I haven't tried this. This was actually sent in a subscription. I have it in Cashew 3.5. I just, I need to try it. It like disappeared into my skin. Apparently I look like Casper. Okay, I needed to shake it up because it was just like too liquidy. Okay, that might be okay on the skin. So I'm gonna keep this for now and try it out. Hey, it was sent to me in a subscription box, so I might as well try it. And if it's too light and I like the foundation, I'll just buy it in a deeper shade. Tarte Amazonian Clay in Medium Neutral. This should be my shade. I will have to try it out and see if it's still my shade, but I love this foundation. It is really pretty. You can go in lightly, you can build it up, but full coverage, it, it can get really thick on the skin if you're not careful. ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hydrating Foundation. I love the concealer. This is in shade Light 60N. It's probably not my shade. I don't know why I never tried it. Yeah, that is too light. So I'm going to pass this on. I'm sure I have a friend who would be willing to take this off my hands, especially since it's brand new. Catrice True Skin. This is in shade Cool Rose. Also not my shade. It is really, really pale. So I'm going to pass this on. It is a really pretty foundation though. And I like the original Catrice that I had tried, the HD Skin, which I want to pick up in an updated shade. Elf Camo CC Cream. I need this in an updated shade. I have it in Light 210 Neutral, but it is a stunning, stunning CC Cream. Beautiful. I am going to keep it for now. I think I've used it with the Halo Glow to like deepen it up, but I just, until I buy a new one, <laughs> I think I'm going to keep mixing it until. Ella Masqua Skin Base. I just bought this and I bought it in the wrong shade. This is SB06. I think so. It's just, it's, it's too light. So I'm going to pass this on even though I just purchased it. Nabla Skin Realist. This I love. It's in shade too light. And even with the Halo Glow, because of the skin balm texture, it's actually really, really slippy. So I'm going to get rid of this. I might purchase it in a deeper shade. Tarte Shape Tape Cloud Coverage. I need to buy this in a deeper shade. This one is 22N Light Neutral. It's just, it's not my shade. It doesn't mix well with the Halo Glow. It's like, it just, it doesn't, it's not cute. So I'm gonna repurchase this in a deeper shade. Pearly's Perfect Glow BB Cream. This is SPF 30. I have in shade medium. This I like for days that I just go to the beach and I don't wanna put like a whole bunch of makeup on it, but I wanna cover my redness on my skin. So I will keep this one. Nude Sticks Tinted Cover Foundation in shade Nude 2.5. This is actually really, really pale. It's pretty, it's not my favorite, so I won't repurchase this, but I'll see if I have a friend who likes it more than I do. Oma Say What Weightless Soft Matte Hydrating Foundation, which matte and hydrating, it's a whole mouthful. This is in shade Fair Light, so I am going to get rid of this. I don't know that I'm gonna repurchase it. I wasn't a huge fan of it on my skin, but someone I'm sure will get some use out of it. 
This one I've had for a minute. This is a Maybelline Fit Me. I have it in shade. Oh, it's on the top. This is 120 Classic Ivory. It is way too pale. It is really pretty though. So maybe I'll repurchase it at a later date, but for right now I'm gonna get rid of it. And I, th and I think I've had it for a minute. Morphe Filter Effect Soft Focus Foundation, medium to full coverage. This was in shade Light 6. Not my shade anymore, but I also was not a huge fan of this foundation. I tried it a couple times and I just, I wasn't a fan. So I'm gonna get rid of this one. Merit, this is in shade Bisque. This is their stick foundation. I really like their foundation. I also like the packaging. The aesthetic is really pretty, um, but it is super light. Actually, I say that, but it looks like I could probably, oh, I might be able to blend that out. Maybe I will keep it. I do really like this. I like it for work because it is minimal makeup. So I guess I'm keeping that. I thought it was too light, but I was wrong. ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Acid Tinted Moisturizer. This is in a shade light eight neutral. I need to repurchase this in a deeper shade. This is really pretty on the skin. So I just, darker shade. That's like the story of my life right now. I have these two powder foundations. This one's from KVD shade tan 165. This might actually be my shade now. Yeah, I'll use this. I might use it more like a setting powder on top of a foundation. And then the one size turn up the base versatile foundation powder. That is a mouthful. This is in light two, which is neutral undertones. See, in high school, I would use a liquid foundation and then I would use a powder foundation as setting powder. This may be pretty as a setting powder. I should probably put it in my setting powder drawer so I think to reach for it. It might tone down my house labs. <laughs> yeah, these two are gonna go into my setting powder so I remember to grab for them. And then the last one, this is from She Glam. This is the Skin Fluencer Full Coverage Foundation Balm. I have it in shade Wheat. It's a really pretty shade. I loved how this went on the skin and how it looked. It was beautiful, so I'm gonna keep this as well. And then I also like that they put the expiration date, so it's good until 2025 if you don't open it. Once opened, it's good for 12 months. And then it has this cute little sleeve to protect it. I'm gonna put this right here just so I can put what I got rid of in here and not mix them back up. That is 21 foundations that I got rid of. Okay, we're on to concealers. And <laughs> they're usually a little more organized, but we'll get around to it later. All right, so these two from Maybelline. This is the 30 hour wear super stay active wear. 10 is too light, 15 is my updated shade, so I'm gonna keep 15 and pass on 10. The Hourglass, what is this? The Vanish, Vanish Airbrush Concealer. <laughs> this one's in the shade Silk, which is too light. And then this one I got in an updated shade Sepia. Really love this concealer. It is beautiful under the eye. It's gonna keep my darker shade and get rid of my lighter shade. The Shiseido Synchro Skin. Love this concealer. It is too light. It's also like at its wit's end. It's almost gone, but it is too light for me now. I love the Synchro Skin series from Shiseido. 
will probably repurchase this as well as the foundation. Both are beautiful. Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer. Really like this. I think Pearl is actually too light. And honestly, I think I had Snow before, which was even lighter than this. Um, I think I'm going to keep this for now, see if it's my right shade, and then pass it on if not. Nabla Regeneration Uplifting Creamy Concealer. I'm not a fan of this. This is in shade Ivory. It has a little, like, weird spongy thing on it. It's just, it's not my favorite concealer. It is really nice packaging. It's just, it, it's not my shade. It doesn't look good on, under my eyes, so I'm going to pass it. Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Instant Retouch Concealer. First off, I'm almost out of it too. It's also not my shade anymore, 170. So I'm gonna throw this one away. Tarte C Power Flex. This is in shade 20N Light Neutral. This is really pretty and I will be keeping this. The Kaja Don't Settle Concealer. I have mine in a shade 05 Fortune Cookie. Absolutely love this concealer. It is beautiful under the eyes. Gonna keep this one. Makeup Forever Ultra HD Light Capturing Self-Setting Concealer. This is in a light shade. <laughs> this is shade 20. I don't know if you can see how pale it is. It is not my shade, so I'm going to get rid of this one. Maybelline Fit Me Concealer. This is in shade 25. I did not like this at all when I tried it. <laughs> it's not pretty. Um, I'm going to throw this away. Tarte Creaseless Concealer. This creased all over on me. I do not like this foundation, or I do not like this concealer. I got it in a subscription box. I would buy the Double Duty Beauty, the Ultra Creamy Shape Tape, or the original Shape Tape, over this one. Like, these two right here, they're not my shade, but I would buy, repurchase them over the Tarte Creaseless. So this one's going away. These two are also going to go away because they're not my shade. 20B Light and then, yeah, both of them are 20B Light. I would actually purchase the original Shape Tape again. But these three are gone because this one sucks and these two are not my shade. Marc Jacobs Extra Shot. <laughs> this is a really pretty concealer. It is no longer available. Mine's in the shade Light 120. It's just, it's too light. It's super pale. So this is the Pretty Vulgar Undercover in shade 60 Little White Lies. It is very pale, so I'm going to get rid of this one. She Glam Concealer in the shade Coconut Flakes. This is really pretty. I'm going to continue to use it. I've only used it like twice, three times, but so far I've liked it. So Fenty Beauty Bright Fix Eye Brightener in Seashell. I want to say this is too pale. I'm going to keep it for now because I'm not really sure. The NYX Bear With Me Concealer Serum. I have mine in the shade Golden and Vanilla. Vanilla is too pale, so I'm going to keep Golden. It is a beautiful concealer, though. Il Maquillage. I'm flawless. <laughs> Multi-use perfecting concealer. I have mine in the shade. I have it in shade 2.5, which is too light, so I'm going to get rid of this. It is a pretty concealer, though. ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Creamy Concealer, shade Light 40N. I need a deeper shade, but this isn't too pale that I can't use it, so I am going to keep it for now. The YSL Touche Claw High Cover Radiant Concealer. I have it in shade 3. I need to repurchase this because I'm pretty sure it's almost gone. It is really beautiful, though. Anastasia Beverly Hills Magic Touch Concealer in shade 4. It is too pale, so I'm going to get rid of it. Maybelline Instant Age Rewind. I need this in a darker shade. This is in shade Fair. So getting rid of this, we'll probably repurchase because it is beautiful. This is the Item Beauty Air Hug Concealer in shade 110. It is really pretty. It is kind of light, but I can kind of just barely get away with it. So I'm going to keep it for now. It is Fora Best Skin Ever Full Coverage Multi-Use Concealer in shade 15.5N. I actually had to repurchase. I had purchased it originally. It was too dark and then they let me exchange it in store for a lighter shade. Bobbi Brown Skin Full Cover Concealer in shade Cool Beige. Really pretty concealer. Love it under my eyes. So I'm going to keep this one. Dose of Colors Concealer in shade 8 Light. I need a darker shade. <laughs> it's, 
it looks like Casper the Ghost. So I need an updated shade for this one. Conceal the Deal Full Coverage Concealer from Lawless. This is a beautiful concealer. It's in shade Shell. I do need a deeper shade, but the one I have right now just barely gets away with. Huda Beauty Faux Filter Concealer. I have it in shade Marmalade. This is beautiful under the eye. Absolutely stunning. Born This Way Ethereal Light Illuminating Smoothing Concealer. That is a freaking mouthful. I have it in shade Buttercup. This is really pretty, so I'm going to keep it as well. Benefit Boing Cakeless Concealer. Really pretty. I have shade 2. I probably need a deeper shade, but I'm going to keep it for now. One Size Turn Up the Base Butter Silk Concealer in shade Light 1. Probably need a deeper shade, but it is really nice and... So far, it's been really pretty under the eyes. And the last one, and I almost didn't see it, this is Natasha Denona in shade 4N Neutral. I'm gonna keep this one because it is really pretty. Do I need an entire drawer just for concealers? Probably not. I probably need to get one of those like dividers and new foundations concealers, but that's where we're at for right now. Now let's see what I got rid of. We got rid of 17, not too bad. So 17 concealers gone and then an individual drawer for concealers. <laughs> okay, you guys, now we're on to setting powders. And I have more than I actually need, but I need to go through them. Let's see, these two I just put in here when we decluttered the foundations. So I'm gonna set these aside for now. All right, I have three Huda Beauty in here. I don't know that I need three, but this one in Cupcake is actually almost gone, which is why I bought a replacement in shade pound cake the only reason is cupcake is on the pinky side pound cake is more like tan neutral and then i also have translucent which is sugar cookie so i'm gonna keep these two for sure i'm trying to use up cupcake it actually sometimes most of the time sits on my table especially in the summer this is definitely the setting powder that I use in the summer because it just absorbs my oils. So these three will stay for now because I'm trying to use up Cupcake. The CoverGirl Clean Matte. This is in shade medium light. It's a pressed powder oil control. I've used this a couple times. I do like it. I want to say, is it Tati who like swears by this or whatever? It's okay. I don't know that it's like my favorite, but I've only used it a couple times and it's winter. So I don't really have a lot of oils that I need to control. I'll keep it for now because I just purchased it, but we'll see later. NARS Translucent Crystal Light Reflecting Setting Powder. This is actually really nice. It has a weird scent though. And then when you look at it, it actually has one of those cup covers, um, but it will fluff everywhere when you go to open it anyways. So I'm gonna keep that. Vizzy Art Setting Powder. That's all it is, Vizzy Art Setting Powder. It says a ultra fine, no flashback setting powder creates a soft matte finish, absorbing oil and blurring fine lines. I really like this. It does also have the netting in there so it doesn't floof everywhere. Um, it is one of my favorite ones for translucent type of stuff. So I'm gonna keep that one. This one from Tarte, I think they just reformulated. This is Filtered Light Setting Powder. I'm gonna get rid of this. I just, I don't reach for it. It makes a huge mess. I don't travel with it because I end up with powder everywhere just trying to open it. So this one's gone. I just got a sample of Makeup Forever. I need to use this, try it out. I don't know that I need to buy a big thing of it right now just cause, um, hello. <laughs> so I'm gonna keep this and try it out. One Size Ultimate Setting Powder. This is really nice. I have in shade Translucent, but there's so much in here. And I also like it because it'll mute down some of my deeper shades of foundation. Fenty Beauty in the shade Butter. Really like this in the spring and summer when I'm a little more oily. It is also almost done. I don't know if I'll repurchase. We'll see. There's a lot of setting powders that have been released in the past couple of years. 
So for now, I'm gonna hold on to that. Touch of the silk powder. One, this is really expensive. But I don't know that I was a huge fan of it. It has a very interesting like sifter on it. I need to try it out some more, but I might actually declutter it the next time because this, I don't remember loving it. Fit Me Loose Finishing Powder. This is a beautiful setting powder for the drugstore. I don't use this nearly enough, but it is really nice. So I'm gonna keep that for right now. Juno and Co, this is translucent, the makeup setting powder. This is actually really, really nice. And there's so much of it in this freaking brick. I'm gonna keep that for now. Jeffree Star translucent. It is a good setting powder. I liked the shade that I had. It was like one step up from translucent. This I feel makes me look like ghostly sometimes. So I think I'm gonna get rid of this. It has a really pretty scent though, I will say that much. Yeah, it still smells really nice. It's just super pale. So passing this. I, I was looking for this one because I've got both of the Laura Mercier's. This was actually on my table, I used it today. Really like this one. This is the new Ultra Blur setting powder. I really like this and it is, it's not a like ghostly white shade. It has more of a tan shade to it but I really like the setting powder, so keeping that one as well as the original. This is just a shade translucent. Both of these are beautiful and they just absorb oil so well. I actually had to give one of these away in a giveaway because I got it in the subscription box. I got this one in the subscription box and then like a couple months later, I got it again. So this I will never run out of. There's just so much in here and even when I do use it, there's just a lot of powder in here. So keeping this as well. Stay Matte from Rimmel. This is a really good affordable face powder. Really nice at absorbing the oils or resetting your makeup later on in the day. House Labs Bio Blurring Loose Setting Powder. This is really pretty. It does kind of have a weird sheen to it. So if you're not into like shiny foundation, skin, whatever, you may not like this. I don't mind it. It is really pretty though. NARS Translucent Crystal. Oh, this is the pressed powder in the loose form. I'm gonna pass this on to a friend because I have it in the loose powder. Kimchi Chic Puff Puff Pass Set and Bake Powder. This, there's so much in here, um, but I do really like the setting powder. It is beautiful. Fenty Beauty Invisimat Blotting Powder. I just don't take this with me. I don't reach for it. Like I've used it a couple times, but I don't know. Like I had it in my backpack at one point for work, but I don't know. Do I need this? It is a cute concept. Like it magnetizes together. Mm, maybe I need to take this to work. That's what I'll do. I'll take it to work. Jaclyn translucent setting powder. This is actually really nice. Um, I will use my sponge in this or even a powder brush and it just goes on so nicely. I swear I've had this forever. This is the one from KVD in Translucent, the Locket Setting Powder. Even as much as I use it, it just does not seem to disappear. I'm gonna keep it though because it is really nice on the skin. It Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores Pressed Powder. I don't really know that it like makes my pores disappear. I am gonna get rid of this. Hourglass Veil Translucent. I can always use the little travel size. Urban Decay Translucent Soft. Softening Loose Setting Powder. Uh, I'm gonna keep this. I don't remember if I like it. It does have a sifter. I hate those sifters, honestly. I'd rather it just fluff everywhere and me make sure that like I pack it down before I open it. Those sifters make it so difficult to get product out. Beauty Bakery Flower. I'm gonna keep this as well. It's good for travel. Oh, this one. I feel like, oh yeah, it's all over. I had taken the sifter out of it <laughs> and now it's just, yeah, I made a mess out of this one. It's pretty, um, but I'm gonna throw it away. These two from Ciate. This is in Everyday Vacay and Extraordinary Translucent Powder. I don't know that I've opened these. Have I? Yep, I have. I don't reach for them. They're in the back of my drawer and I feel bad for that. So I'm gonna try these again and see. I need to put them closer to the front and make a decision after that. Okay. 
Becca. This is the Hydra Mist Set and Refresh Powder. This is beautiful. It used to have a cooling effect. It's Becca's no longer a brand, but this setting powder is really nice and so finely milled. I'm gonna keep this one. And then Pretty Vulgar. This is the Powder Room Mad About It Translucent Setting Powder. Also stunning, and I love the packaging. Look how cute that is. So keeping that one as well. Oh, this Beauty Bakery one is going everywhere. I don't know that I want to travel with that. All right, I've made a little bit more room. That is what we're keeping for now. So I got rid of five. Okay, you guys, declutter complete, at least for those different categories. Now I have some numbers for you and I kind of talked about it. But for foundations, we started with 45 and I got rid of 21. Primers, I started with 37 and got rid of 10. Concealer, we started with 36 and got rid of 17. And setting powders, I started with 35 and I got rid of five. And that seems like a small number, but setting powders, I go through quite a bit. I like to rotate. I don't like to use the same ones because some don't work well with other products and they last forever. If you look at some of the containers, they have so much product in it. I just, they last for a long time. They also last longer than liquid products, which is why I have setting powders, blushes, bronzers that technically are past their expiration date, but they still work and they last. Anyways, that's a whole nother topic. But you guys, thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Hit the bell for notifications of new videos. And if you like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Until my next video, you guys, bye. I'll see you in the next one.